What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on Create a Pro website. My name is Levi Hagen and in this video, we're gonna be speaking on a step-by-step -step process that I use to choose a niche. We're gonna be covering five steps, starting with brainstorming ideas. Next, we're gonna be specific and narrow down the idea. Then we'll be talking about ways that you can determine whether there's a market for your idea. After that, we'll be making sure that your niche solves a problem. And lastly, we're gonna talk about testing your niche in a live market. Before we get into the process, let's talk about what a niche actually is and why it's important. To put it plainly, choosing a niche is just categorizing yourself or your business. People wanna put you and your business into a box and categorize it like a finance site or a portfolio site or whatever category you might fall under. So just learn to accept it and categorize your content to one theme. The definition states that a niche is just a specialized segment of a larger market with a particular kind of product or service. For instance, the larger market that I'm talking about could be something very broad like fitness, food, reading, clothing, whatever you might want it to be. Underneath these broad categories, you can come up with a niche or a smaller subcategory. So under fitness, you could try something like weight loss for women after pregnancy or bulking plans for skinny guys. Under clothing, you could do something along the lines of comfortable clothing for daily life or weatherproof jackets for hiking in extreme conditions. You get the idea. It's basically choosing something specific from a broad topic and essentially categorizing you or your business. All right, so step number one is brainstorming. Firstly, you don't need to brainstorm your specific clientele because often when you're new to a market, you don't know who your clientele is gonna be. Instead, you wanna think about what you're knowledgeable in and what the demand is for what you're providing. In order to do this, you need to sit down and put together all of the ideas that you have, look at it and see what you're good at, see what you wanna talk about and see what you can come up with. Conducting a brainstorm is easy. You start with a giant list of everything that you can think of and then you narrow those ideas down. To start, put all of your niche ideas down on a piece of paper. So for instance, you might be thinking about fitness, food or clothing. Underneath each of these different ideas or categories, you wanna put down all of the different subcategories or subpoints that you can associate with them. You're essentially doing a content dump of everything that you can think of underneath each different category that you already have. So under fitness, you might think of CrossFit or HIIT workouts or any other kind of workout that you can think about. Under food, you might talk about different cuisines. Under clothing, you might think of different seasons or different brands. As you continue to dump these ideas down on paper, you'll begin to notice that some of these categories you can think much easier of subcategories rather than others. For fitness, you might be dropping tons and tons of ideas, and then for food and clothing, you might be struggling to come up with a lot of different topics. This is important because you might be passionate about all of your initial ideas, but passion simply isn't enough when it comes to a niche. You need to be knowledgeable, consistent, and passionate, but most importantly, knowledgeable and consistent. Any niche you choose, you're gonna have competition. So the reason I say to choose a category that you're knowledgeable in and it's easy to come up with ideas with is that you're gonna be met with other people who offer the same material so you must provide it in a better way. While you're sifting through your ideas in the middle of the storm, ask yourself, what are you good at or what do you like? Try asking yourself, what do you like talking about? And can you talk about it forever? Is there enough material that you can be consistent with your content? I do wanna make something clear. There's a difference between being passionate and being able to tolerate something. Maybe you don't enjoy a niche as much per se as another, but it's something that you're naturally gifted in and knowledgeable in. Obviously finding something that you love and that you're naturally good at and knowledgeable in is ideal. Just know that there are some exceptions to this. If you're willing to tolerate talking about that thing for the next foreseeable future, you might have a profitable niche. Although you might not be as passionate about the niche idea as others, you can find passion in helping your audience solve a problem and using the best product that they can. Finding passion in helping people the best way possible is another way that it can work. Okay, so step number two is to delve deeper, be specific. So after working through your brainstorm and choosing one idea from the many, it's now time to take that niche and narrow it down even further. The goal should be to at least go two or three levels deeper in your thinking. Notice the examples that I gave at the beginning of the video. They're always twofold. They clearly state what the product or service is and who it's for. So weatherproofing jackets for hiking is just jackets for hikers. It's pretty self-explanatory. In a like manner, when I'm thinking about a new idea, I like to ask myself three different questions. What am I doing this for? what type of person needs it, and what problem am I solving? For example, I create websites here at Create a Pro Website. Who do I do this for? Beginners. And what type of beginner do I do it for? Well, beginners who have no previous experience or classes. And then what kind of problem am I solving? Well, I'm saving people money from hiring web designers, and I'm also empowering people to build their own websites. Let's use a broader example. Let's say that you wanna build a niche in something like fitness. Okay, so who are you using fitness for? 
college students, let's just say. Okay, so what type of students need you? Maybe it's students who don't have the resources to go to a gym or, you know, students who might be in the middle of a pandemic and can't come. So what problem are you solving for them? You might be teaching them how to use things around their home that they can use without needing gym equipment to still get a workout in. And just like that, you've got your niche. Now you're a fitness trainer who instructs college students on how to do home workouts. It's that simple. All right, so step number three is to figure out if there's a market for your idea and then analyze that market. This is a really important step. After coming up with a narrowed down niche that you wanna try, it's important to take this next step. It's to do research into the market for your idea. If, for instance, you have a $200 million market, it'd be really easy to pull out $100,000 versus pulling the same $100,000 from a $1 million market. So checking to make sure that there's profitability in your niche is also a next checkbox that you wanna make sure you can cross off. One thing that you can try is to type into your search bar the industry that you're trying to get into and do a little bit of digging to see if you can find out what you're looking for. You can also look for publicly traded companies and review the revenues and see how big the market actually is. After you've done a little bit of digging and you've found that there is a market for your niche, you might be able to refine your niche even better now that you have an understanding of the industry and what problems people in that industry are looking to solve. So the solution is twofold. Remember, when choosing a niche, it's about solving a problem, but at the same time, you need to solve it in a unique way. If you're not unique, then you're going to blend in with all of the other competitors that you have in your niche who have already been in the market for a lot longer than you have. Another thing that I wanna point out is that it's okay to have competition in your niche. This means that there's actually, in fact, a large market for your niche because there's obviously other people offering services and making successful businesses from them. All right, so after checking if there's a market for your idea, take into account monetization. If your business or website gets very popular in the future and begins to gain traction, how are we gonna monetize it later on down the road? What affiliate products or ads would pair well with your niche? You can search affiliate marketing websites like clickbank.com, for example, for products that are related to your niche. Now, clickbank.com is a website that provides digital products only, so you can also check out Amazon's affiliate program where you can sell Amazon products for a commission. This way, you don't have to physically handle any product yourself, and you can also make a passive income online. If there are a bunch of products that are related to your idea, then you obviously have a plentiful niche. You can also try looking at competitors and analyzing them in your niche. Analyzing the direct and indirect competition is incredibly helpful. Analyze what they're providing and how they do it. Pay attention to the audience and see what their audience is telling them. Learn from it. You can definitely learn valuable information from your competitors because if they're successful, then you can be too. One last thing that you can do is to look at social media for hashtags that are prominent in your industry or niche. This will give you directional data as to what your target market is looking at. All right, guys, so step number four is to solve a problem. I felt like I needed to reiterate this in its own step because it's absolutely crucial. This is the bedrock for creating any niche and becoming successful in any sales endeavor. You must solve someone's problem, whatever it may be. So just make sure that you can cross this checkbox off. All right, guys, so step number five is to test your niche. The final step in creating your niche is to test what you have so far and to pay attention to the metrics that come from it. You've already hopefully done extensive research into the industry that you're seriously considering. So actually getting some hands-on experience and testing your niche in a real market can show you a lot. One way that you can go about testing your niche is to create a single page website or a landing page and offer some sort of free information book or pamphlet or something that might entice people in your target market to look at what you're offering. For example, using the college student niche idea that I had earlier. You could create a quick landing page that is professional and intriguing, and then offer some sort of single free workout plan for one day to give them a taste of what you're about for home workouts. After creating a landing page, you can drive traffic to that page by using services like Google Ads and pay attention to the metrics and traffic that come in. This will show you the amount of interest in your service. If you're at this stage in the process of choosing a niche and you're ready to test it in a live market, check out the description below or the rest of my channel because we're constantly putting out step-by-step -step tutorials on how to create a website. I'll put a link down in the description to one of our website tutorials in case you're interested. We walk you through the entire process to make it easy and possible for you to create your own website and we even give you a discount on hosting. Anyways, one more tactic that you could employ would be to distribute surveys that are about your niche and pay attention to what your target market responds with. You could then publicize your survey in guest posts or industry-related groups or forums on social media or using Google surveys. You can pay Google to promote it for you. The last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is more of a future step. We're a year, maybe two or three years in the future right now. You now have your own niche and you've created a website and a business around it. You've gained quite a large following and you're gaining traction in the industry, becoming a big name among your competitors. 
It's important to understand this. Later on down the road, you wanna adopt a little bit more of a fluid niche or an updated niche. And what I mean by this is that you wanna to listen to your audience, listen to what they want, and you can adapt your niche to serve those needs. For instance, let's use the college student workout example that I used earlier. You might find out by paying attention to your metrics that most of your traffic actually isn't coming from college students. Instead, it's coming from stay-at-home moms looking for a healthier lifestyle. You can then morph your niche and change the direction of your content to be centered around stay-at-home moms because they seem to be your strong majority. So be sure to listen to your audience because they're gonna tell you what they want. All right, guys, I hope walking you through the process that I use for choosing my niche was able to help you all in some way. If there's one thing that you take away from this video and I cannot stress how important it is, it's to choose a niche and to uniquely solve a problem. So whether you're walking through these steps to create a niche or you've watched this video to verify the niche that you already have, you need to remember to be specific and helpful in your business for it to actually work. If you learned something new from this video or you enjoyed the content, please drop a like or leave a comment about one of your niche ideas. And this channel is all about how to create professional websites from home and how to make money with websites. So feel free to check out my other videos. All right, I'm Levi Hagen with Create a Pro Website and I'll see you guys in the next video.